Welcome back to part two of our series where we are exploring what I would definitely call as a more advanced topic, but really kind of putting together a lot of different concepts, things like power pivot, things like pivot tables, list objects, relationships, all into a single series. So we are mimicking, doing some analysis, using VBA and exploring a lot of different objects. Now, in our previous video, we talked about basically what was our objective with all the information we currently had. And then we started writing the code. We found that for the most part, we were just declaring some variables and then creating some references to different objects. A lot of times people go, oh, this is such a boring part. I, I already know how to declare variables. That's very much so, but I will always tell people, declare them, declare them, declare them, because it will save yourself time behind, uh, well, sorry, uh, down the road, only because it's very easy to interpret your code and understand exactly what you're doing, especially for a complex uh, little piece of code like this. We definitely want to make sure we write our code clearly and we know what objects we're working with when, given that we're working with so many different objects. It's not just power pivot, it's not just pivot tables, and it's not just list objects. All right, so what we're going to do in this video first is we're going to create a connection to each of these two tables. This is normally where people get lost because creating connections, while it looks easy, there's big opportunity to screw it up because you'll do things like I do, which is you'll misspell things. I have a reputation for doing that on this channel. So the first connection that we're going to be adding is the sales table. This contains our sales data. Now I'm going to take my Excel book connections. So remember, this is representing all the connections in my workbook. And I'm going to do the add to method. So this will add a connection. And then I believe with this one, it adds it to power pivot. So it gives you the option for adding it to power pivot. The first argument I'm going to provide is the name of our connection. In this case, I want it to be sales table connection. Sales table connection. I'm going to do a line break so I can make it a little bit readable for everybody else. I'm going to give it a description as well. So I'm going to say represents our sales data table. And then from here, this is where you got to be really careful. So now we're going into the connection string with this one. Type it exactly as you see it. Worksheet, all uppercase, semicolon. Close it, do a plus sign, take the Excel book, call that path property. This is creating a connection string. In this particular situation, our connection string is going to represent a worksheet connection, but I need to provide the workbook path. Now, depending on where you saved it, did you save it to OneDrive? Did you save it to a local disk that's not on OneDrive? Your workbook path is gonna look a little bit different. So in this situation, I want it to be more dynamic because I know sometimes people put it on different uh, devices. They might put it on OneDrive, they might put it locally. Regardless, if you record it using VBA and then you were to save it somewhere else, telling me right now it's not going to work the second time around. I did that, I saved it, tried running again, and I'm going, oh, wait a minute. I put it in a different location so the book path changed. Be very careful with the connection string. Okay, then from here, we're gonna do the command text. This is basically like we're selecting it, we're selecting the data. In this situation, I'm gonna do Excel book name plus sign, exclamation mark, and then the name of the table. In this case, it's F sales. Then from here, I'm gonna do the command type. I think seven represents a SQL command, but don't take my word on it. <laughs> and then we're gonna create a model connection. So there is an argument that says, do you wanna create a connection to the power pivot model? Now. Previously, we haven't done that, but in this case, we do. We do want it to be in our power pivot model. And then do we want to import any relationships? Well, there aren't any right now, so we can just have that equal false. We're going to create that relationship once it's in power pivot. Now, in order to save ourselves some times and just lessen the chance of something potentially breaking, I'm going to just copy it and I'm going to change the parts that I need to change. So I'm going to change this to D products. And then here it's going to be the product data table. This is going to stay the same. 
this is not going to stay the same. So this one stays the same. This does not stay the same. In this case, it's going to be D product S at the end. This still stays the same and all of this. So with this section of code, we are now creating two connections to our workbook. I'm going to run it and we're going to see what happens. Okay, so it looks like it created those connections successfully. Obviously, after this point, I'm going to comment out the code because I don't want it to create it again. It could cause errors, but we now have connections. If you go into it, you can see our description is right there along with the name. Please make sure you give your connection names meaningful names. If you don't provide one, Basically, Excel gives it a default one, and it's not really informative sometimes. So please make sure you take the time to give it and also give it a description as well. A lot of people skip over this. It's actually really helpful if people do it. And you can see here, OK, sorry. So the command type is table collection. So it's a table collection. Here I'm grabbing that table. And you can kind of see here it's a worksheet data connection and all sorts of fun stuff. You could go to the Power Pivot one as well. Um, in this situation, it's an OLAP query. It's a cube. It's a model. And then you can see here Pivot Sales Analysis. And so here it's on the Sheet Pivot Sales Analysis A3 to A7. Okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to, like I said, comment this out. And then from here, give myself some space. Okay, and then we're gonna start doing the stuff behind the scenes. So we're gonna start defining our relationship. However, in order to do that, I need to grab the columns that I need first. So grab the model columns. The first one is going to be the Excel product column. This is going to reference the object variable that we declared up above right here. So how do we get there? Well, we already have our model, so we're going to say Excel model. This represents our power pivot model that has a model tables collection that represents all the tables in our collection. Well, what are the names of the tables? Well, it's the ones that we just loaded. In this situation, I'm going to grab F sales. A table is made up of columns, so I'm going to grab the model table columns collection, and then I'm going to grab a specific column from that collection. In this case, I want the product column. And I'm basically going to repeat this, but I'm going to grab the other column from the other table. So in this case, I'm going to say D products, and then I'm going to do product name. From here, I'm going to take these two columns and I'm going to add a relationship, add a relationship to our model. So I'm going to take my Excel model. I'm going to go into the model relationships collection. This represents all the relationships in your power pivot model. You can have multiple relationships and then I'm going to call the add method. And then for my foreign key column, it's going to be Excel product column. So this is the one where you should be seeing repeats and then our primary key column. This is the one where you should only see unique values. It should be Excel product name column. Hope everything was spelled correctly. And then from here, um, we'll run this and we'll see what happens. And it didn't work. Oh, I see why, because I didn't miss, I misspelled it. Product name column. So that looks good. You can't create a relationship basically off of the same column that's kind of counterintuitive okay oh geez oh it's not responding oh no oh no we'll give it a second maybe it's just freaking out no it's not freaking out it's actually gonna fail <gasps> this is the problem I'll have to see if I have to close it down. If not, I'm going to give it a few seconds. If worse comes to worse, I'm going to edit this a little bit and then I'll skip ahead. Okay, so I got it to work. It looks like something 
probably just crashed or whatever, but I was able to get back to work, but that was the important part. We've all experienced this, right? It's always the fun part. <laughs> okay. So um, I was able to successfully add the relationship. So the the first thing I think that I want to say is uh, this, this was basically correct. It was this part up here. I was referencing the same one. Uh, so that seemed to cause some issues with it. And then additionally, I think it was probably the fact I had the pivot table on there as well. So just as a note, again, experience from me to you, delete the pivot table first because you could really leave yourself open to what I just had happened. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. So I love sharing this stuff. It's so interesting. But you can see that we do have our collection in here. Notice that it's referencing the data model table. That's pretty neat, right? It's pr pretty neat and everything looks okay. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go back in to Power Pivot and I'm gonna comment out this because I really don't want it to freak out again. And then from here, well, what do we do? Well, we're gonna create a pivot cache and with that pivot cache, we are going to create a pivot table. And then I think from there, I'm gonna probably do maybe one little thing, which is add a measure and then we'll finish off the video in number three. So let's create our pivot cache. So create our pivot cache. In this situation, I'm gonna set that Excel pivot cache equal to the Excel book. A workbook has pivot caches, so it has basically a collection of them. And with that, you can call the create method and you need to specify a couple different things. The first is the source type. In this case, we're going to be doing an external and we're going to be using the, um, the workbook, uh, sorry, the data model. The source data is going to be, and this is the fun one, Excel book connections. We're going to take that connections collection. A lot of people don't know this. You can actually reference the workbook data model collection in your workbook connections collection. I always have a hard time saying that one because it's just too many, too many similar sounding words. And then version six, you can just do that to the default. That's just normally what I said it. So again, Excel book connections, version six, I'll put this on a new line so everybody can see it a little bit more clearly. And then from here, Okay, perfect. So that's going to create our pivot cache. What do you do with that pivot cache? Well, we're going to create a pivot table from it. So create a pivot table from the pivot cache. Then from here, we're going to say set Excel pivot table model equal to Excel pivot cache. There is a create pivot table method. And then I need to specify a couple of things. The first is the destination. Where do you want this pivot table to go? Well, in this case, I'm gonna say pivot sheet, the pivot sheet, and I'm gonna say range A3. And then I also need to give it a name. In this case, I want it to be, God, can I freaking type? Oh my God, <laughs> equals sales analysis. And then from here, we're going to have a default version. In this situation, just leave it equal to six. And then just like the previous one, just for some readability purposes, I'm going to put this on new line so you can easily see it. Perfect. So I have some neighbors, they have some young kids and they're so friendly. They're always so nice. So at least they're out playing. But if you hear it in the background, I apologize. But they like playing with their chalk, as I've learned. <laughs> they really like drawing with chalk. OK, so there is a pivot cache and there is now a pivot table model. So what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be creating a measure from uh, our power pivot model. This is so we can add it to our pivot table. So let's add a measure. How do we do that? Well, we're going to set our Excel measure equal to my Excel model 
dot model measures. There's a collection of them. Then I'm going to do add. The first one is going to be the measure name. It's going to be total sales. And then from here, I'm going to do associated table. What's the associated table? In this case, it's going to be the Excel model model tables collection. And then I'm going to do the F sales. Then from here, I'm going to do the formula. What is the actual DAX formula that I need to use? In this case, it's going to be sum X. So sum the table rows. I'm going to specify my F sales table. And then from here, I'm going to do F sales units. And then I want to make sure that this is here and then it's units sold under my little square box and then do times. I'm going to use the related function to pull up the related table. And then I'm going to have the list of columns. In this case, I want to pull in that price column from the related table. And we'll talk about that in a little bit of a little bit more detail. What happened? Oh, it's because I didn't put ending quotes on this one. Okay, so then from here, I'm going to do format information. This is going to say how it needs to be formatted and as a date or as a currency or number. So I'm going to say Excel model, model format currency. We're going to use the default symbol and then I want it rounded to two decimal places. So here is the um, that. And then again, I'm going to just for readability purposes, I'm going to say symbol and then decimal places. And then from here, the final thing is our description. What should that be? In this situation, it is the number of units sold. So the number of units sold times the unit price. Bam. Bam. <laughs> OK, so that will add a measure to our particular model. And then what we can do next is after we create our pivot table, we can then add the fields to the specified parts of it. And then we'll also do a little bit of cleanup and formatting. So I'm going to cut off the video here because I obviously went way over than I was planning to. But if you have any questions about basically creating connections, grabbing the columns, creating a relationship or pivot caches, tables or measures, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, in our next video, we are going to continue building our pivot table and then doing some formatting. So we will see you all in the next video.